Hello and welcome back to my channel Between the Keyframes, where I discuss cartoons, animation, and all good things between. Today we are looking into the life and work of renowned Japanese illustrator Yoshitaka Amano. In one of my previous videos, I talked about the video game Final Fantasy VI and why I felt it was the best video game ever made. Well, along with an amazing story, fantastic graphics, and an epic rocking soundtrack, a huge part of that reason comes down to Yoshitaka Amano. He was responsible for bringing to life many of the heroes, villains, and monsters in the game, and he did it through his wonderfully detailed illustrations. It is his work that you see on the box art, and strategy guides, advertisements, and products. His world building and stylization really stimulates your imagination and gets you fired up to play the game. But in diving a little deeper, you will see that there's more to Amano than just one video game. Born in 1952 in a small mountain town called Harar in Shizuoka Prefecture at the foot of Mount Fuji, Amano would grow up in a very creative environment. His father, Yoshio Amano, was a veteran of World War II and was a lacquer artist. Dedicated to his work, he was spending countless hours in his studio creating beautiful lacquered works. Amano would rarely get to see his dad and would only have a few good memories of him. Not because he was a bad father or anything, but because he suddenly died when Amano was only 10 years old, leaving him, his mother, and three siblings to figure life out. But of what his father had, Amano certainly got, as his amazing work ethic and artistic ability were certainly traits passed down from his father. When he was 14 years old and nearing the end of school, he went on a three-day vacation to visit his best friend in Tokyo. They spent those few days drawing and dreaming about meeting professionals in the manga industry. So they decided to stop dreaming and actually do it. And before the end of the trip, they got to visit two manga studios. However, there was one more studio he wanted to visit, but he had to go back home the next day. Thus, Amano was left with a decision that would change his life forever. If ever there was a good reason for skipping class, Amano found it. Instead of going home like he should have, he and his friend made the trek to Tatsunoko Studios, which at the time was in the middle of production of the Speed Racer series. To quote Amano, I can't precisely remember that day, except that we saw them working on Speed Racer. We were dazzled by the cells, the illustrations, the backgrounds, etc. We felt like it was a privilege. It was emotional, a big moment. Afterwards, he left them some drawings, then went home to finish out the rest of his school year. Three weeks after that trip to Tokyo, he received a letter from Tatsunoko Studios. It was a job offer. After three months of training, Amano was finally ready to begin work, starting out as an in-between animator. In other words, he drew between the keyframes. You see what I did there? between it's titled my channel. The first cartoons he worked on were Speed Racer. That's right. They were still producing Speed Racer when Amano came on board. It's about a young race car driver named Speed looking to prove himself while driving a very advanced race car called the Mark V. And Judah Boy, about a teenage martial artist named Senshiro searching for his father's killer. The president of the company, Tatsuo Yoshida, saw great raw talent in Amano. And so one day Yoshida decided to do something revolutionary. He cleared out an office and named it the character room. In this room, he appointed Amano as chief character designer and charged him to come up with new characters for all their cartoons. His first contribution was coming up with the main characters of Gatchaman, an incredible cartoon about five teenage superheroes masked and outfitted like different birds, defending natural resources from evil terrorists while using martial arts techniques unique to each hero. And also Time Boken, about an eccentric scientist, Dr. Kieda, who made time machines called Time Boken. After testing one out, he vanishes, leaving behind only a talking parrot and a valuable gem. It is up to his lab assistant, Tanpei, to travel back in time and rescue the doctor. For 15 years, Amano would be a big contributor to Tatsunoko Studios' success. 
Despite having a reputation of being a maverick and generating a bit of jealousy amongst his peers, he was able to set a solid foundation for what was about to happen next. Yoshitaka Amano decided to do something that he had been thinking of for a long time but didn't have the courage to do. He was going to quit the studio and go freelance. Times were rough in the beginning for Amano, but he would soon get his footing. He was contracted to illustrate the covers and interiors of the Vampire Hunter D novels in 1983. If you don't know, Vampire Hunter D is about a wandering bounty hunter who is half vampire and half human. He gets hired to kill full-blooded vampires in a future post-apocalyptic landscape. It incorporates sci-fi, western, and horror genres to deliver a stunning and groundbreaking achievement in manga and anime. In 1986, Amano got a call from a scriptwriter friend of his and said that a video game company called Squaresoft wanted to offer him a job. Square wanted to get in on RPG video games after the huge success of the Famicom game Dragon Quest, but wanted a unique illustrator to design his characters. Dragon Quest had an illustrator of their own, Akira Toriyama, a famous manga artist best known for the Dragon Ball series. So Squaresoft wanted an illustrator to counter Akira's designs. Akira's were very cartoony, so Square wanted something more realistic and mature, and Amano fit the bill. At the time, video game graphics were not so sophisticated, and a lot of artists despised the idea of doing work for video game companies, but Amano saw it as an interesting challenge. When he got home and told his kids that he was offered a job to draw characters for a Famicom RPG, they went crazy with excitement. Oh yeah, wait, I forgot to mention, Yoshitaka Amano is married at this point and has two sons with a daughter on the way. Sometimes when you think about the influential people who inspire you, you only think about their work, but fail to notice that they may have a family of their own. Amano got married to Shinobu in 1976 while he was still at Tatsunoku Studios, and she has been a loving and supportive wife ever since. He has three kids, born in 1977, 78, and 90. And though they grew up under their dad's celebrity status, they are forging wonderful paths for themselves. Now, back to Amano's work. Designing was a challenge at first. After touring Squaresoft's headquarters, he was surprised to learn that video games could only be rendered in very few colors. This led Amano to believe that he had to actually draw in 8-bit pixels. So naturally, when he showed off his first drawings, they had to explain to Amano that they didn't want him to draw characters as if they were in the game. They wanted him to produce full illustrations, and then the game programmers will take his drawings as inspiration 
and convert them to digital characters for the game. After this rocky start, Amano got his bearings and started creating the world of Final Fantasy as you know it today. While Final Fantasy only represents a small percentage of his work, it seems that when he meets a fan, it's all they want to talk about. But Amano takes it in stride, saying, for an artist, it's still better to be recognized for 1% of their work than not at all. Aside from Final Fantasy, Amano continues to chase his style and try new things. He would illustrate American comic books such as The Sandman, The Dream Hunters with writer Neil Gaiman, and Elektra and Wolverine, The Redeemer with writer Greg Rucka. He would also develop a 71 minute anime called The Angel's Egg. It's not a conventional animated movie, so it wasn't very well received, but it is very much an underappreciated showcase of Amano's artistic expression. You can even see him acting in a feature film where he appears as Hiroshi opposite Christopher Walken and Willem Dafoe in the movie New Rose Hotel. In conclusion, I just want to say that Yoshitaka Amano has been on a lifelong quest to discover his style, but never fully satisfied. He is ever expanding and ever changing. As all artists are, we see the flaws in our work where everyone else sees something great. But one thing is for sure, Amano's dissatisfaction drives him to be better and has brought satisfaction to everyone else. I am Justin Owen, and this is Between the Keyframes. Thank you so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.